Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about monitoring your Modbus devices with the NetGuardian DIN. The DIN is a small RTU built for size constrained sites, hence DIN in the name, it's meant to mount on a DIN rail. But anyways, this is good for monitoring things such as your generators that are uh, Modbus enabled or other legacy SCADA equipment uh, that can communicate serially via Modbus. So to start configuring this, I'm going to go ahead and go to provisioning and then Modbus devices. Now here's where I'll actually set up my Modbus devices that I want to pull. Uh, here I'm just going to pretend I have like a uh, IP connected generator that I want to pull for some fuel levels. So the first thing I'll do here is go ahead and fill out an IP for this generator that I want to pull. So I'll go ahead and enter one here. And then the TCP port that I'm going to pull this generator on I'll leave it at 502 and since I only have the one device I'm going to leave my Modbus address set at 1. So now these are things that you may adjust depending on your setup. Um, just uh, you'd have to reference how your network is set up to figure out what device um, values you're going to put in those fields. Now another thing up here at the top we have this Modbus pull delay and Modbus timeout. The Modbus pull delay uh, is the delay between poles in milliseconds so I'll leave that a thousand that's fine. And the Modbus pull timeout is uh, how long we're going to wait uh, with the device not responding to a pole to declare it as failed. Okay so now I've got my device set up so I'll go ahead and click save and then write. Okay, my data was submitted. So now I have my device set up, but now I actually have to go in and tell the DIN what registers I want to pull. So to do that, I'll go here to Modbus Registers. And in this Modbus device, I'm going to go ahead and select my first device. Now this says none here because if we actually go back device type is either none or Modbus RTU. If I'm going to be polling something using Modbus RTU, I will select Modbus RTU, but if I'm just going to pull something over IP, I leave the type as none. So now going back to registers, I'll go ahead and set this to my device 1, and I'll go ahead and expand this details field here. So the first thing I'll do actually is go ahead and fill out what I want to call this value. So what value am I going to be pulling out of this register? For this example, I'm just going to pretend I'm going to pull out a fuel level. So I'll go ahead and fill that out here. Okay. And now, uh, here I'll actually go ahead and set up uh, what register I'm going to pull. So here, register number. I'll just say this is register number 23. And then here I'm going to actually set uh, how many bits I'm going to use to mask this value. I'll go ahead and leave it at 16. And then down here I set whether or not this value is signed or unsigned. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as unsigned. And then here in the scaling field, uh, this is whatever value I'm going to multiply um, the value I get back by to get my actual real value. So sometimes you may uh, refer to the manual on your generator and find that uh, to get the real value you have to multiply the return value by a thousand. And so that is the value that you would put in the scaling field, whatever you need to multiply your return value by to get your true value. In this case I have one, so whatever uh, value I get back is what I'm expecting to be my real value. So I'll go ahead and leave that. And then units, I'm going to go ahead and put percent since I'm interested in a percentage fuel level. So now here, uh, thresholds, uh, you fill out your thresholds to trigger threshold alarms. So here, I'll adjust these to some things a little bit more realistic for my fuel level example. So if I want to say a major under is when I'm really in trouble and I really want to get someone out to refill this generator, I'll go ahead and say 25%. A minor under, I'll go ahead and put that at 50 to kind of get it on the radar. And a minor over and major over don't really make sense in this case, uh, since if you have your fuel level at over 100%, 
if you figure that out, you've probably got a way to make some pretty good money. So I'll just go ahead and put these at 105 and 110. Since in this case, there's not really any real life scenario where I'd be seeing those alarms. Okay. And then dead band here at the bottom is the uh, value in which my value has to cross the threshold in order to trigger the alarm. So for example, if my fuel level hits 24.9%, I won't declare a major under since my dead band is 1. Once I hit 24%, then I will actually declare that major under alarm. And this is used to prevent uh, alarms coming in and out really quickly uh, if values fluctuate for any reason. In this last field here over on the left, this uh, record settings, the stable frequency, is how long am I going to wait to let things kind of settle uh, to where I'm convinced that the value that I'm getting is going to be a true and accurate value. Here in this case, uh, I'm just setting up a mock device, so I'll go ahead and leave that at zero minutes. And now that all my configuration is done, I'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click save. And once again, I will write these values. Okay. And so now our configuration is all done for getting a fuel level from my generator. Now to go ahead and find what values I'm getting back from this device, I'm going to go ahead and go up to Monitor and then Modbus Registers. Here, uh, if I actually had a device hooked up, I would start getting values, but since I don't, I'm not going to get any value, uh, but once you actually hook this up, here is where you will see your readings. And that is all there is to setting up Modbus polling on your NetGuardian DIN. If you have any questions, feel free to give DPS Tech Support a call at 1-800-693-0351. Talk to you later, guys.